Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine at uh, uh, SLE. My name is Vadim, I'm uh, speaking to you from CVE, Center for uh, Viscondi and Informatica, from Amsterdam, and I hope to make a remote yet useful contribution to the Sleebog workshop. So I was asked to talk about open notebook science, but actually uh, after adjusting it to the Sleebog, uh, the topic has become subatomic scientific knowledge objects. So we start with the premise that we want to uh, take the principles, the ideas of open, si op open source and apply it to science. So we want something like uh, scientific knowledge objects that we can distribute, analyze, modify, change, uh, repurpose, specialize and so forth. So uh, a lot of people are talking about open science, but that's just the part of it that's just the dissemination of them. Uh, open research is the same plus open collaboration and in general we want more transparency, more re reproducibility and so forth and that's where the uh, open notebook science comes in, into play. So what's that? It uh, actually originated in uh, sciences like chemistry or biology where you spend most of your time in the lab doing some experiments. And uh, whatever you do, you document in a big book, which is called the lab notebook. So for other sciences, it actually means that you expose your data, even raw experimental data. Whatever you do during your research, uh, you put in the lab notebook and you let other people uh, analyze that, reanalyze it, reinterpret it, uh, so basically validate your own results and repurpose and reuse it for something else. And there are some variations of it depending on what you want to disclose. So basically in computer science and software engineering we all can agree that it's very nice to have it once you have it and it opens all kinds of uh, doors to extra uh, analysis to uh, revalidation to uh, replication of experiments and so forth and uh, and um, it achieves basically everything that you might ever want from open science uh, but it's tough to create so it's actually in a, a in practice it's so tough to create that you uh, that it jeopardizes the research itself you spend so much time putting the stuff in the notebook that you don't have time to do anything useful and this is counterproductive so uh, basically uh, uh, the scientific knowledge objects uh, this is from the liquid publications uh, paper uh, it, it says that it, there is an atomic one which is a paper they even suggested it's journal paper but uh, I will be mostly talking about subatomic ones so something to put in the lab notebook so every entry has to be some contribution but it's considerably smaller than a full-fledged uh, uh, paper and they contribute to the body of knowledge which is why I'm speaking at Slibok and they contribute to the reputation of the authors, which is the motivation for them to do it. So the examples of subatomic uh, SKOs, this one, for example, it's uh, uh, Edsger Dijkstra, one of the uh, most well-known and most prominent Dutch uh, researchers, especially in computer science. Uh, he wrote uh, something like 1,600 uh, notes uh, to himself to not forget something and for other people so he was distributing it in this form and all some of them um, ev evolved into an article but not all of them definitely not all of them but a lot of them spawned discussions or were just documenting some of experiments and so forth so all of them are useful they are now considered uh, a heritage of, of him and they are scanned there is a website which uh, uh, has all of them. Then uh, in uh, somewhat more modern, if you go to GitHub, uh, every person has uh, who's registered there has a record of uh, you know commits, comments, uh, merges, and so forth. Uh, tweets also uh, can be a, a subatomic scientific knowledge object, and every tweet you know it, it's not just a message, but it's also it can be hashtagged by the event, and the event can be you know. Uh, something something bigger that can be identified and, and linked to this one. Uh, Quora answers can be uh, can be that uh, articles to to Wikipedia. This is about Adrian von Weidharten in Russian. Uh, 
Uh, this one is about MIGA modeling, also in Russian, but in, on a different website. This is uh, also a contribution to uh, to Wikimedia Commons, a picture that you might use uh, at some point. Uh, slides for uh, for talks, like for a talk that I've given a couple of days ago on Open Notebook. Uh, video videos on uh, on YouTube, uh, blog posts, um, uh, papers that are uh, inherently free to download, like the archive ones, uh, papers that are. Uh, free to download because it's an open access journal and papers that are uh, not free to download. So the only reason this PDF link is here is because I'm looking at it from the uh, CV. So uh, my solution to that was that basically uh, I automate as much as possible and I take all the traces of what I do. So uh, git commits, tweets, uh, Quora answers, papers of course, but they are not subatomic. Uh, but the act of putting the paper online, for example, is a subatomic uh, SKO. Presentations, blog posts, uh, wiki edits uh, on related topics, of course. Uh, tools, but the, the moment of publication of, uh, of a tool, any kind of documentation, shared raw data or process data, anything like that. And most of this stuff can be automated and then you... Um, Basically, uh, we, we assign a unique ID, like also at uh, Schredex, I used uh, EWD, I used VVZ, which is, which is my, uh, 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 my name. And um, they are linked automatically to some action, and they are tagged, uh, not automatically, but manually, to a related paper, or effort, or project, or uh, topic. And in the end, it looks like this. So there is uh, one entry that uh, says that, you know, uh, final draft was committed to my personal uh, uh, repository somewhere and is related to the paper. The paper is not linked because it's not yet online. The uh, second one, he's already linked to some paper, which has a final version, so it's uh, it's online. The second one is, you know, some, some hacking. The third one is also related to a tweet, related to a presentation, and at some point it might be related to, uh, to some other, like a publication, for example. So uh, a conclusion is basically that there are a lot of open questions here, like partiality, whether to put all subatomic uh, scientific knowledge objects online or put them, uh, or bother about them at all. That's, uh, uh, that's a big question because it's, uh, uh, for, th for some of them, it's a loss of time. But at the end, uh, you don't want to be accused of you know, hiding anything. And uh, whether it constitutes prior publication or not, whether it's too much or not, or how to query it properly or mine the repository of this uh, subatomic SKOs and so forth. So uh, basically, to summarize, uh, so anything op uh, anything public domain or CC by CC by SA is open. We want open source project for uh, science. Open access is good for dissemination. Open research for collaboration. We propose open notebook for traceability. Uh, we want uh, reproducibility ultimately and uh, uh, transparency. And basically, what I'm doing is uh, you have an ID. You timestamp it, you have some actions that are automatic, you have some tags that are manual. And there are many open questions about that, but uh, uh, it's research. So if you want to join me on that, uh, feel free to uh, send me an email or a, a direct message anywhere. So uh, some credits here and well, thank you for your attention and good luck.